Hey y'all, Jen Fernandez, Loan with Jen. Today we are talking about credit restoration strategies. You want to stay tuned for this one. Okay, we're back. We have a special guest from a credit restoration company. She's an expert, Louisa Deason of Deason's Consulting Services, and she is going to let us know. So tell me, what are some strategies on credit restoration? What I think some of the strategies about? that people need to really focus on is A, pay your bills on time. A late okay. payment can bring your score down about 110 points. Oh wow. The other thing is, make sure you ask a lot of questions, whether it's us who help you or somebody else, make sure that they have the legal authority to dispute all three credit bureaus with all negative and derogatory items at the same time through attorneys or credit restoration specialists that are licensed. So how would you know, like if I'm just a random person, how would I know that they're going to really check it out or not? With I ask a lot of questions. You know, I, t I teach my clients and or if they don't use me prospects so if they go to somebody else these are the kinds of questions you need to be asking you know are you licensed are you credit are do you offer credit restoration or is it credit repair because there's differences in the license that they carry and what they're lawfully allowed to do oh and so what they're lawfully allowed exactly. to say so if they're not allowed to say credit restoration they're going to know it they're not going exactly. to just tell you that and the other piece is you don't want to have somebody go into a bunch of disputes and then that repair company isn't going to resolve the, those disputes for you. That's a nightmare. Okay. So how would I know? I mean, I guess, how would I know that the other person is being truthful? I mean, so do I Google these people and look for ratings or like, how do I search for... A well, they should be registered under a credit restoration company. Okay. So I need to Google yes. credit restoration company and see what comes up. Exactly. And the people I'm talking to, I need to also Google their name and see what kind of reviews, consumer exactly. rating reviews. So are they rated on where, like Yelp or Google or where A would lot the of ratings times, be? There may be ratings just online in general. Okay. Um, I would certainly use those search engines first, but then it's a matter of picking up the phone and calling that particular company and just asking a whole bunch of questions. Okay. And is there a place online that I can get a bunch of questions that I'm supposed to ask or like you know, if you do, if you pretty much do a Google search on the difference between restoration or repair, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of answers that you can print out. Okay, got it. And so, what else to expect on credit risk restoration strategies? So we talked about late payments, collections. What else? Collections, things like that. But I think that other focus is, you know, how to build positive credit is one of the biggest strategies we have. You could be doing everything right, but if you don't have trade lines. And if you're not using them correctly, that can also hurt your scores. Anything like debt to income ratios, things of that nature. So a trade line is a reporting. It's a trade, like a car, a credit card, that's what trade exactly. line means. Okay. Or if you're using a credit card and you have it and you never use it, that's also detrimental. So but I've, I've heard a lot of people ask me that, oh my gosh, I heard that it's bad for your credit to, to close accounts and they have like... 15 credit cards. So tell me about that. I think the difference is if you have the company close it on your behalf, it's not as bad, but if you close it yourself, then it is a little more detrimental to your score. Oh, really? Yes. But you know, on our end, what we notice about the score that mortgage companies pull is that if you have a lot of unused credit and it's just open and it's got zero balance, you have the propensity to get in debt overnight if you lose your job. And so actually it's the scoring model takes away points for that. Too many open trades. Exactly. So we like people to carry or we recommend people more normally carry no more than two or three credit cards. Yeah. You don't have to open up 10 or 15. Nobody should have that many. So if you have a huge amount that you're not using, it's pretty safe to say you could close them and you'll be fine. I mean, the ones that really don't hurt you if you close them are going to be the, the small Macy's one or the, okay. you know, Victoria's Secret card or something. whatever it is. Okay. But the main ones we're concerned about are those Discover cards, the visas, the MasterCards, those things. And we teach people to use them wisely. Okay. Don't go out and go on a shopping splurge. What we want you to really focus on is making sure that if you have bills and you have a budget, just maybe shift the way you pay bills differently. Okay, interesting. Yes. Uh, anything else people should know about credit restoration strategies? I think in the restoration world, what we do is we there's a bigger focus on educating you about your rights and what is allowed and what is not allowed to do and of course the benefit of having you know people that are licensed and certified in every state to be able to operate and do the right thing for you instead of put you in a worse situation. 
Can we talk about collections really quick yes. before we end? We're, we're almost done, but I have to ask about collections, okay? So you wanna watch this because I pull 50 credit reports a month and, and I see this. So I see collections get renewed all the time. Like people are almost at that seven year spot where it's supposed to fly off of your credit and then bam, some company resells it and it appears again. Like what's up with that? So let me just start off by saying the difference is we educate. So when we have people that have collections, we tell them they don't just automatically fall off. They legally have to be disputed and removed. The thing is that there are statutes of limitations in the state of Texas. So if they're normally older than four years old, then I think it's safe to say don't try to pay it off. Most often than not, what we see is medical debt and medical debt can be very detrimental to your scores. Number one, the number one reason why people file for bankruptcy in this country is medical debt. Oh wow. The second thing is there are special parameters around a collection involving a medical issue. So there's a specific document that cannot be transferred over to the collections agency because of the HIPAA Act protections to the patient. Oh, so wow. if they ever had that document, we could actually come in and sue that company. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of things that we do that others don't. That others don't. So that's where a credit restoration company, exactly. not a credit repair company, but a credit restoration company is really will aid people knowing the statutes of limitations, knowing the rules. Exactly. So they're not writing endless letters and getting nowhere. Exactly. Is that one of the benefits? That's okay. a huge benefit, yes. Very good, very good. Anything else? Any parting comments on credit restoration? Pay your bills on time. Please, please, please. I tell people all the time, you know, you may have let it slip three days or two days, but once it's reported on your credit reports as a it's late payment, it's even harder to remove than a bankruptcy. So yeah. and it can cost you about 110 points. It is, yeah. and, and, and it's what she says is true. We see people go 30 days late, like literally y'all pay on the 28th day. Let it post overnight. You're sliding in right under the radar. We had someone that was ready to buy and they let a Victoria's Secret go yes. 30 days late and their score dropped like 60 points and they can't buy a house now. So really stay on top of your bills if you know that you're gonna be buying a house. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. We'll put your contact info here. Thanks. Legacy Mutual Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity lender. The opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Legacy Mutual Mortgage.